Just one spark of wrong saying of the tongue, that's it. Everything be on fire. It is a whole word of what he called the tongue, a whole word of what wickedness. That is when it is not tamed. See? Corrupting your entire body. He can set your whole life on fire, for it is set on fire by hell itself. In other words, the mouth is so powerful, I mean, the tongue is so powerful that it can set a life on fire and set a life to hellfire. He said it can set your whole life on fire. See, because, you know, we don't pay attention to what we say many times. You know, I, uh, I grew up hearing these proverbs. I'm not too sure whether it's common in the Western, in the Western world, but it's, they will say that um, words are like eggs. When they drop on the floor, scatter. You can't pack it anymore. You can't pack it together. You can't make eggs. Yeah. yeah. Say so words are like eggs. If you drop it, I mean, if you can drop eggs and repack it again. For it is set on fire by hell itself. If you look at it, do you show what in King James, James 3, 6. Just this verse. We're going to go back to NIV. And he said, and the tongue is a fire, a word of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, among every member of our body. That it defiled the whole body. It defiled the whole body and set on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire of hell. So the word, God is saying the, to the tongue is tiny, but it's so powerful that it can even set a, a life to hellfire by what comes out from it. So let's go back to NLT, verse 7 now. People can tame all kinds of animals. Birds, we've seen it, they tame parrot, they will tame, you know, train them to say anything. Reptiles, you see, um, crocodile dundee, <laughs> the guy that, tame cro that tames crocodile in uh, Australia. Uh, his uh, child took over now after he died. Uh, people train um, uh, monkeys, they train uh, even lions, elephants, to do circus. So you say people can tame all kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and fish. Imagine they tame um, dolphins. They swim, they dance. Let's go on. Can we read this together, please? But no one can tame the tongue. Mm. I don't see anywhere where people say, I want to go for tongue training. <laughs> to go and train my tongue. <laughs> and I will pay the fees five thousand dollars by the time I come out, my tongue will be well trained. He will, he will say negative words again, he will say wrong thing again. He say, say nobody, he said no one can tame the tongue. <laughs> he is restless, he wants to say something. <laughs> he has to say something. It is restless and evil. Full of deadly poison. Ooh. See, the tongue is full of deadly poison. Um, don't say, don't say, I tell you. Shadi, she did this and did it. Don't say, don't say, I tell you. The tongue just slander, defame, and kill them. Do you understand what I'm saying now? Full of deadly poison. But no one can tame the tongue. It is restless because he's always want to say something. He had to say something. And evil, full of deadly poison. Not just poison, deadly poison. Because the tongue can poison the whole nations of the world. Have you not read in the Bible that when the Antichrist comes back, when he shows up, the Bible says he will make great boastings with his mouth. How many of you have read that in the Bible? Say the other guy will make great boastings. Yeah, huh? So let's go on. So he said, no one can tame. We tame. He said, we tame animals, but no one can tame the tongue. 
Sometimes it praises our Lord and our Father. Now, in, don't forget the writing to the church. Sometimes it praises our Lord and our Father. And sometimes it causes those who have been made in the image of God. Of the Father. <laughs> so, which one? It praises the Father, causes the image of the Father. And says, that's the tongue for you. That's what it does. That's why it says it's very, you know, uh, King James says it's very ruling. This one says it's very restless. Sometimes he praises our Lord and Father, and sometimes he curses those who have been made in the image of God. Curses and praises. King James says he blesses and he curses. Verse 10. And so, blessing and cursing come pouring out of the same mouth. You see, we're talking about the tongue, but you now I say what? Mouth. So in other words, talking about the tongue and our mouth together. The tongue that is, you know, stuck in our mouth that is, you know, if everybody look at me. If you ever seen a tongue, see this tongue when, when you do this, it's large. But God forbid, if you've ever seen any tongue cut out from human's mouth, it shrinks quickly. It's so little. You think it's, the moment it cut out from the mouth, it shrinks. Very tiny. That's why the Bible kept on saying it's, it's, it's a small thing. The moment, I remember one, one guy had an accident. They had to, within a few, was it, was it within one hour, two hours, they had to sew the tongue back to his mouth. This tongue cut out of mouth. And so blessing and cursing come, up, come pouring out of the same mouth. Surely, my brothers and sisters, this is not what? Right. Let's go on. This is not right. We can. Does a spring of water bubble out with both fresh water and bitter water? No. You're asking a question. Is it does a spring of water bubble out with both fresh water and bitter water? He said, "Can King James says, can a, does a, fount, a fountain brings out fresh water or spring water and bitter water at the same time?" So the answer is no. He, he's saying that if the if the mouth blesses the Father, why are we allowing it to also curse? The image of God. I understand what I'm saying now. If the mouth, you know, speak, you know, speak blessing, pronounce blessing, how, how come we allow it again to also issue out curses? Okay? Let's go on, please. Say, so does a fig tree produce olives? Certainly not. Fig will produce, you know, fig fruit. Or a grapevine produce figs? He said, no. And you can't, draw, you can't draw fresh water from a salty spring. Certainly not. It's not possible. It's either it's, it's a salty spring or it's a fresh water. Amen. And he's using all these natural analogies to describe, you know, how God, God's creation. In other words, he's trying to say that the way God made our mouth is supposed to function like this one. If it's going to bring fresh water, let it be fresh water. If it's going to be fresh spring, let it be fresh spring. If it's going to be blessing, let it be blessing. Amen? Let's go on, please. If you are wise and if you are wise and understand God's ways, prove it by living an honorable life, doing good works with the humility that come from wisdom. Amen? Amen. Now, what James will now begin to do here is to link what we'll just be saying to how to apply wisdom so that, you know, he was saying that no, nobody can tame the tongue. But now he'll now begin to say that the wisdom of God can tame it. And you know God's wisdom is God's word. The wisdom of God can tame it. And you must, let's go on. But if you are bitterly jealous, and there is selfish ambition in your heart. Don't cover up the truth with boasting and lying. You know, 
please let's read this together. This is very powerful. We say, if you are bitterly jealous and there is selfish ambition in your heart, don't cover out the truth with boasting and lying. You know how, you know, people cover up their heart with God's word. He said, don't cover up, you know, jealousy and selfish ambition with God's word, with the truth. And with boasting, we, uh, we, we're covered up with the truth, the, uh, we're boasting and lying. So the thing is, <laughs> I'm trying to look for a practical example that all of us we, we, we relate to. Um, okay, for example, we just, you know, we started, James started here that people that want to teach, they should be careful because they're going to be judged strictly. Somebody just had this unnecessary dying ambition to preach. <laughs> Me? I don't like preaching. Ah, I don't like preaching. Ah, I don't like preaching. Because when you preach, it takes a lot of energy from you. Take takes a lot of energy. And you have to make sure that people are listening. That's why I don't like preaching. But inside of them, they really want to preach. He said, don't be boasting and be lying at the same time. If they, and somebody, but if they give you a opportunity to go and preach, you would like to go and preach? Eh, not really. I just don't like preaching. Ah, preaching? Fine. I envy that pastor preaching every day. But inside of them, they feel like, let me just get a mic and preach too. You know, because... You see, the reason why I started is that a lot of people think preaching is to entertain people and to show that you can speak. You are a good orator. You are eloquent. They also know the scriptures. So you can quote scriptures. And you can prove, you know, if you preach, and the word of God does not have effect on anybody. No correction, no instruction, no direction, no conviction. All you did was what? Entertainment. Even while you're making people laugh, you are communicating. While you make people laugh, rather, you are communicating. People are getting something. You understand what I'm saying now? And um, when people go home, they wake up in the middle of the night, the, the message is ringing. It's ringing in their heart. Somebody, so, <clears throat> let's go on. Say, so for jealousy and selfishness are not, are not God's kind of wisdom. Such things are utterly unspiritual and demonic. For jealousy are what? Selfishness are not God's kind of wisdom. Such things are what utterly unspiritual and demonic. So when you see jealousy and selfishness, the Bible says it's wisdom. Because selfishness and jealousy will be used to manipulate people. So it's wisdom. <laughs> but it's not just God's wisdom. So that's why it's, they say it is demonic. Amen? So let's go on. For wherever there is jealousy and selfish ambition, there you will find disorder and evil of every kind. Where you find jealousy and selfish ambition, there you will find disorder and evil of every kind. Evil of every kind. Let's talk about evil of every kind. Say, well, show all this in King James. This just, uh, just, you know, verse 16. For where envy and strife is, there is what? Confusion and every evil work. Because when there's envy and strife, what other evil work do you think it will attract? Anybody want to guess? Huh? Ah, you can cause murder, yeah. Huh? Eh? Disunity, yes. Any other evil work? Mm. 
backstabbing, slander. Yeah, covetousness. Yeah. Well, we already put strife there. Strife will be fight because they already have strife. You know, two groups fighting or, you know. Eh? Yeah, okay. So he said, and every evil work. Yes, uh, Nifemi. Eh? Eh? Yeah, hypocrite, yeah. Yeah, people with deception. Deception. Yeah. Envying and strife. What is envy? What is to envy? Nifemi, you want to... You raise your phone. You want to give us them? Envy, well, jealousy, and uh, it, it, they are like brother. They are like twin brothers. <laughs> they are like twin brothers. Just slightly different from envy. When jealousy is not as wicked. As envy. Jealousy is okay. Let me, let me put it this way. Um, Charlie just got married to a millionaire. Amen. Amen. <laughs> 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 Follow me now. So I'm jealous of her. I wish I'm the one that got married to the guy. Am I making sense? I wish I'm the one that got married to the guy. Why should it be shady? That's the jealousy, but envy. I wish, God forbid, something happened to shady so I can take over. That is envy. Jealousy transfers to envy. You envy complete that you wish something just happened to her so that the guy can be free and I jumped on, on him. So they are like two, they are two brothers. One is just more wicked than the other. So he said, for where envy and strife is, there's, that's why he said it brings a lot of confusion and every evil work. So let's go on verse 17. So he said, all those ones are the wisdom of this world, the wisdom of demonic wisdom. He said, but the wisdom from above. He said, but the wisdom from above is first of all what? Pure. It is also, don't forget, what we started with the tongue. So, and jealousy and envy and strife, how, how are they expressed? Through the tongue. And that's why I say the tongue is so deadly that when it gets into the, to the, to the rhythm of jealousy and envy, it can send, because anybody that die, anybody that die in envy and jealousy and strife, they're going to hell. So that's why I'm writing this to the church. So he said, but he said, but that is demonic wisdom. But the wisdom from above is first of all pure. In other words, so why will a Christian be jealous of Shadi that got married to her and wish her evil? Am I making sense? It's supposed to be wish her well. It's supposed to wish her well. That is evil. That is evil in the heart. Amen. So, so, but the wisdom from above is first of all pure. It is also peace-loving. Pure, peace-loving, gentle at all times, and willing to yield to others. And that is the difficult part, willing to yield to others. It is full of mercy and good. Does this sound like fruit of the Spirit? 
Yes, it does. Does it sound like God? Yes, it's God. God's wisdom. That's why the Bible says, uh, James 1 9, uh, James 1 5, rather, if anybody lacks wisdom, let it have from God. If you ask God for wisdom, these are the things God will be telling you to do. You to others. <laughs> you, you understand what I'm saying now? Be gentle, be pure, be loving, be merciful, full of good deeds or good works. He shows no favoritism and is always what? Sincere. That is God's wisdom. Amen? So let's, that, I, I, I think we have one more verse left. Am I right? Yes. And those who are peacemakers will plant seeds of peace and reap a harvest of righteousness. How do you make peace with the words of our mouth? And those who are what? Peacemakers, we plant seeds of what? Peace. We plant seeds of what? Peace. Don't forget, I kept on saying, you know, I lo- anytime I see seeds, but I just, I like seeds, seeds, seeds. And those who are peacemakers, we plant what? Seeds of peace. Seeds of peace. And they also will reap what? A harvest of righteousness. So a harvest of that means you become you become right standing before God because you are, Jehovah Christ says, blessed are the peacemakers, but they shall be called what? The children of God. It is a righteous thing before God for people to create peace. And there's no way you create peace. You don't create peace. I don't know, sign language can do it, but we're talking about tongues, the power of tongues. You create peace with the words of your mouth. You create peace with people. You gather people together. You try to make peace. And while you are making the peace, don't forget verse, the previous verse, verse 17, it tells us how <clears throat> it says, you know, while you are making the food, if, the, the, uh, it is full of mercy and good, and it shows no f- what? Favoritism, and is always sincere. Did we increase the heat? So, is somebody following me now? So, the, ma- the tongue is very important, and the Bible call it, King James call it the smallest member of our body. It's our st- smaller than the pinky. Well, it's very small, but it's very powerful. It's very powerful. He's very powerful to the extent that he can create problem and he can solve problem. He can deliver from hell. He can send to hell. He's so powerful that nobody can tame him. He takes God's word. He takes God's wisdom to control it, to tame him. And the Bible says he's very restless. He wants to say something. That's, he's made to say something anyway. He's made to say something. He's made to talk. He's made to, to you know, to be active. That's why we can run our mouth on the phone for hours. We want to say something. We want to talk. <laughs> Nobody will say that. If people, uh, usually, you know, talk at the, if they sit one hour, they, 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 they talk to anybody, they will look for somebody to talk to. If they are little call, if I did, you know, because he has to talk. And in the midst of talking, he now begin to create problems. You don't control it. You now begin to say wrong thing. You now begin to say things that can get you into trouble and get other people into trouble. Amen. So our our tongue is very powerful. It's very useful. But yet, so after we are done, we wake up in the morning. How are we going to bless God? Sign language? No, our tongue. That's it. He blesses God, and it also causes His image. So. He, he, he now, you know, dropped down to how we have to lo- let wisdom control our mouth so we will not get into strife and to envy and to jealousy. That would be demonic wisdom. But we must apply God's wisdom, which, help, which is pure and, you know, willing to use it, gentle, is loving, and it shows no favoritism and is always sincere. And all this flow through our tongue. 
You can tame animals. You can tame your tongue. But the word of God has, can tame you. In um, uh, our tongue is so powerful that Job, let's go to Job. Let's go to Job chapter 6. Let's look at verse 24. Job chapter 6, verse 24. Can we read it together, please? Is it Job says, so that Job will not sin with his mouth. Job will not begin to pray to God. He said, teach me, and I what? See, the Bible says nobody can tame the tongue. Who was Job crying to to help him to hold his tongue? God. He said, teach me, and I will not hold my tongue. And cause me to understand wherein I have already made mistake with my tongue, so that I will not make mistake again. See, when Job was, got into a problem, his friends thought he was the one that caused the problem for himself. And they told, they told Job, they said, you are messed up somewhere. That means you said something against God. <laughs> Remember, even he was so cautious of his mouth that even when, when, his, friend, uh, when his, friend, his wife came to him and said, he said, curse God and die. And Job said, no, even when you slay me, I will still not, I will still praise him. Look at Job chapter 1, please, verse 22. Why Job was going through, you know, if I look at um, verse 21, let me read from verse 21, please. Job 1, 21. Look at what, when Job was going through all he went through, his children died, the business collapsed, everything, he lost everything. And, where, and Job began to say things and, and said, naked came I out of my mother's womb, Naked shall I return there. The Lord gave and the Lord are taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He was blessing God with his mouth. At that time, I'll be honest with you, if you are not really a born, a born again Christian, at that time, an average Christian will be telling God, uh, I've been serving you all these years. I don't think you are God anymore. <laughs> I don't know what kind of God I'm serving. Have you heard Christians say that before? Have you heard Christians say that? Oh, I cancer, I cancer people. Pastor, tell me what have I not done? I've served, I've done this. How can God let that happen to me? How can God let that happen? And they will be, <laughs> say, wait, 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 wait. If you fight against the devil, God can deliver you. If you fight against me, you know, God can. But you begin to fight against God, you are getting into trouble. So, why Job was saying all he was saying, look at what the Bible says about Job. We're talking about, look at verse 22. How do you sin against God? With what? With the mouth. Look at what the Bible says. Can we read together, please? In all these, Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. I thought you are almighty. And the Bible is not, in fact, God told Satan that Job was faithful and Job was righteous. And Job knew that because he did everything right according to the book. Everything right. So Job had the right to have charged God foolishly. The Bible called it charged God foolishly. You know what that means? Accuse God foolishly. And our, the 
the tongue of Christians can make Christians also charge God foolishly. Oh, I was still telling somebody yesterday, I was talking to somebody yesterday. You know, I don't know how many people I talk to every day. I was still talk, talking to somebody yesterday. The person said, and God knows I've been telling him this. God knows I've been telling him. I said, hey, be careful. Take, take, take it easy. God knows I've been praying. I've been telling him this not to let this happen. I've been telling him, you begin to charge God foolishly. I see God never answer your prayer. See, I was, I was telling, you know, I, I, I tell people every time, I said, look. That's why I love uh, what, you know, Bishop Ilepo did when his wife was sick. He told God, he said, whether before she got sick, you are God. She's sick now, you are God. If you don't even heal her, if she dies, you are still God. So whether you heal her, you don't heal her, you are still God, and I will never stop serving you. It don't happen. Immediately, the woman got healed. That's the way God wants us to act. God has been serving you all these years with all the grace, with all the anointing. How are you going to... <laughs> I've done miracles. I've done... So it's only my, so it's my wife that's going to not suffer. What kind of God? No. The Bible says, Job did not charge God foolishly. So our tongue is very powerful. It's one of the most powerful weapons that God has given us. Don't forget, remember, tongue is so powerful. The Bible says, you shall condemn what? Every tongue. That what? Raise the judgment against you. Every tongue. Tongue is so powerful. So when you even rise in judgment against you, God says, you yourself, use your tongue to do what? Condemn it. That is Isaiah 54 verse 17. Say, so use your tongue to condemn it. Because so that will not be tongue against tongue. Because tongue is very evil. The Bible says it's full of what? Deadly poison. Deadly poison. Deadly poison. Very important. Please, Isaiah 54, verse 17, very important. The tongue is a deadly poison. Full of evil. So when we got saved, we give our life to Jesus Christ. What got saved? Eh? Our spirit. Your spirit got saved. Your mind didn't get saved. Even though you now have the mind of Christ, but you have to, the Bible, the Bible says, renew what? Your mind. Did your tongue get saved? No. You have to now begin to train your tongue with the word of God. Job said, teach me so that I will hold my tongue and teach me and show me where I have gone wrong with my mouth so that I will correct it. So I can correct it. As a matter of fact, um, I, I can't remember the Psalms. Um, I'm trying to... David said the same thing. David said, uh, he said, he said, hold the doors or shut the doors of my mouth. So that I may look for it. These, these old saints, they know something about the power of their tongue. So they will cry to God to help them with their mouth. But our new generation saying we think we can just say anything. Say, hold the door. Say, shut the door of my mouth or something like that. 141, 3. Psalms 141, 3. Yeah, that, that is it. That's what I'm looking for. He said, can we together look, look at what David also said. Set a watch, O oh Lord. <laughs> you, know, you know, like, put security guards against my mouth. <laughs> My mouth is running too much. <laughs> I need some security guard to just keep watch of my mouth. Set a watch, O oh Lord, before my mouth. Keep the doors of my lips. You know, to, to keep, lock it. But lock it, the doors of my lips. Because I'm running my mouth too much. And it's getting get me into trouble. 
I, I, I wish, you know what? I wish all of us can be praying this prayer at least once a week. <laughs> I'm telling you the truth. It will help us, you know. He says, set a watch, O Lord, before my mouth. Keep the door of my lips. So our lips have doors. <laughs> so it can be kept by God. Amen. So this, the tongue is very powerful, unruly evil, full of poison, but yet it's so powerful that it blesses God. We use it to bless people, transform lives, but we can use it to also destroy lives too. And it says he, can, he manifests himself very well in jealousy, in strife. Jealousy is easily seen in action and in words. Strive and envy, silly sin, you can see them easily in strife, uh, I mean action and in words. Also, peacemaking is also in words and in action. So, but it can make us to sin, and at the same time, it can make us to become righteous. It says, so set a watch, O Lord, before my mouth, keep the door of my lips. And don't forget, uh, Job also said the same thing. Job said, you know, how did Job put it now? To hold my tongue. Uh, yeah, Job said, hold my tongue. And the Bible says, in all these things that happened to Job, Job did not sin. He did not sin. He did not sin. How do you think he would have sinned? By using his word. He said he did not charge God foolishly. Post a guard. Message by, show us message Bible Psalm 141 verse 3. Post guard. Post. <laughs> Where would they post the guard from? <laughs> All security officers. <laughs> post a guard. Post a guard at my mouth. <laughs> God, set a watch at the door of my lips so that I will not misspeak misfire. <laughs> yeah. So is it God's word? If it's not important, God would not put it God would not God would not, wouldn't have put it in his word. So so we want to pay attention. We want to pray. Pay attention and pray that God will help us with the words of our mouth, help us with our tongue. It's only God that can tame the tongue. The Holy Spirit will use the word of God to tame our tongue. You know, and um, many times when we want to, you know, go talk to people. For I, I, I like uh, what Jesus Christ also told, you know, tells us in Luke chapter 12, verse 12, one of my favorite scriptures. Luke 12, 12, he said, in that hour, every time I want to counsel people, I say, counsel somebody today. This is what I stood at. I said, the, he said, the right words will be there. The Holy Spirit will give you the right words when the time comes. King James said the, the, he said the Holy Ghost will speak, through, will speak through you. But the Holy Ghost shall teach you in the same hour what you ought to say. That is better than just to walk casually or in the flesh. Holy Spirit, teach me what to say. Teach me what to say. Holy Spirit, teach me what to say. Speak through me. Amen? So important. Psalm 141, verse 3, and the, the one about Job and uh, and James chapter 3, they're so important and look 12 12. But when people go for interview, I always give them this scripture. I say, stand on this scripture. So that when you go for interview, the Holy Spirit will speak through you. It will not be you yourself speaking by yourself. Amen. Well, any question at this point? So let's go back. Yes, let's go back home and study that. Uh, James chapter three again. Yes, Nicole. Well, that was that. Was, you know, that was a uh, uh, a prayer. That was a prayer of uh, God said, "Put me in remembrance. Come, let us reason together." 
That is different. To charge God foolishly is to be telling God that God is like you don't know what you are doing. Are you, seriously? I'm going to die? After all I've done for you? <laughs> it's different from I've been faithful. And I've done everything you have me to do. Look at my faithfulness. You see, it's like a prayer of mercy. You are a faithful God. I know you are faithful. And you reward faithfulness. I've been faithful. So I don't want to die now. Look at my faithfulness and give me long life. Even though he didn't say it like that, give me long life. But that's what he meant. Why did he cry to God? <laughs> the Bible says he wept so before God when he faced the wall. And immediately, the, the Bible says the prophet came back and said, Thus said the Lord, we had 15 years. So that one is, is, is prayer of you know, uh, uh, reasoning together with God and putting God in remembrance. To charge God foolishly is to, tell him, is, to, is to be telling God that, God, you say you are faithful, but I don't see it. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't see it. And die, you know, that will be it. That is charging God foolishly. Because God himself testified to Satan. He said, Have you considered my job very faithful, fearing, righteous? 100 percent In fact, God said God said it was so perfect. God used the word. It was a God says it's a, for God to call a man a perfect man. That is serious. So Job wife said. Cause God and die. He, she was enjoying the money, the wealth. You know, don't forget the Bible says he was the richest man in the East. So she was so used to wealth. Where there was no no more wealth. Ah, what kind of a God is this? Ah, where are all the wealth? Cause God and let us die. <laughs> well, what kind of a God just took, took all your wealth away? You know. Yes. But, but, but the thing is that, are you, are you surprised of Job's wife's remarks? Who, I say, are we surprised? No. Who did God testify of that he was perfect? Job, not the wife. So the wife was just in, flowing along and enjoying wealth. The moment the wealth got finished, she was irritated. She was, you see, that means, can I pitch a little bit? That means Job had a relationship with God, with or without, regardless of the wealth. Job's wife had a relationship with Job and God because of the wealth. So when the wealth was gone, she was gone. <laughs> she was gone. But when the wealth was gone, you see, that's, there are Christians that are Christians. There are some Christians, they are faithful when everything is going on well. But the moment things are not going on well, then they are not faithful anymore. And there are some, yeah, so that, uh, we use the example of uh, Bishop Odepo. He said, whether you heal her, you don't heal her, you take her home, you see, God, I'm not going to serve you. I'm not going to retract. I knew you before I met her. I knew you before I got married to her. So you have, I've seen healing. I've seen miracles. You raised the dead in this ministry. So you heal her, you don't heal her. It's not, it's not, it doesn't reduce you. You see, one thing is that, Christians should understand that there's nothing we do to add to God, there's nothing we do to, to take away from him. You know? And um, it's so important. Me and Priscilla were talking a little bit before the service, and I was telling her that, I, I, you know, as a pastor, I, uh, I get, I don't know the word to use. I don't want to say, I don't know whether I should say disappointed, or I'm not going to say frustrated because I'm not frustrated, maybe disappointed that, eh? no, I wouldn't say grief for them. So I'm just say disappointed because the thing is that a lot of, a lot of Christians and even some of our church members said they want, they want to see some results in their lives, but they want to take steps and do things the way they feel. But you will show them God's word. They will say, Pastor, I see what God said in his word. But this is the way I feel. 
And I'm like, you, you see, you kept on making the same thing. You say, the way you feel, the way you feel, or what you think, what I think. You know? And, I, you know, I would tell you somebody, they say, stop comparing me and my wife to yourself. Because me and my wife, we already decided, no matter how it looks like, no matter what we feel like, we submit ourselves to God's word. Period. That's why we have peace. That's, why he, that's the way to do it. He looks stupid. He may be hard sometimes, but that's the way to do it. If you want to enjoy So don't be saying, you know, am I making sense? Don't be saying, can't can you see how pastor and pastor? Say, no, 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 no. We, we already made up our mind. This is, you know. For example, on my, on my birthday, the early hours of my birthday, my wife and I praised and worshipped 12 midnight to 12.45. From 12.45 to about 1.30, we, no, no, uh, from 12 minutes to our almost about one, we did praise and worship and dancing, vigorously dancing by ourselves. We first of all, we, yeah, 12 to 12.15, we thank God on our knees for giving me a new, you know, uh, birthday, a new life and all this stuff. Then after 15 minutes, we praise God for 45 minutes with a praise, with a praise song, a different kind of praise song on YouTube. We dance. To one from one, we did like almost 30 minutes of worship on our on our knees. Then from 1:30 to 2 a.m., we pray in tongues. Then after that, we now began to talk to ourselves, you know, sharing experiences of life. Am I making for two hours? We did the things that are written in God's word. But some couple will not do that, but they want the result of peace and joy. And I'm not making sense between me and my wife. I'm not making sense. You, you have to do things what God said you should do. So I, I, was, so I, so I was telling you, but I said, you see, the point, do you know, I, I told somebody, I said, you can go to, to all the best churches in this world. You still have to do God's word. Because it is not church that will help you. It is the word of God, you know. The church is to reinforce you, to help. People follow Jesus Christ some of them didn't do the truth. That was that Jesus Christ, the truth in manifestation. So Job had a relationship indeed, regardless of the wealth. But Job's wife can be compared to some Christians. When the going is good, God is good. When the going is the other way, I don't know about this God. <laughs> I'm telling you the truth. I've seen it. I've seen it all. It's still happening. Yeah, it's all over the Bible. Yeah, Job. Oh, Justin. <laughs> Joel, Justin. Yeah. You mentioned about Joker, they will not mention David. You mentioned David, you mentioned Joker. The Bible even called David, the, the Bible called Joker the son of David. The Bible said the sure masses of David. The Bible says, and his kingdom, you know. And his kingdom shall be forever. They even mentioned David in the in the book of Revelation. So, because David, you know, Jesus Christ from the lineage of David, Judah, together, and Jerusalem going to have uh, the city of uh, the capital city of Israel mentioned at the where Jesus Christ is going to come back and set foot foot on all this stuff. So, he, instead of mentioning or attributing. David or Lincoln. In, in Roman chapter 1, the Bible says Jesus Christ was first. Please go, go to Roman chapter 1. Say Jesus Christ was first and foremost the son of David or something like that. Before. So he's supposed to, they were supposed to be saying, he was supposed to be saying Saul concerning, uh, concerning his son Jesus. Yeah, concerning his son Jesus Christ our Lord, which was, which was made what? The seed of David according to the flesh, uh, biologically, because of the descendant of David. Instead of David, I'm supposed to be Saul. That's what he meant by your kingdom forever. They're supposed to attribute the king of kings, the owner of the kingdom, to Saul forever. But because Saul messed up, he did foolishly, disobeyed God, God gave it to David. Yeah. Praise the Lord. This is my, so, <laughs> praise, huh? praise the Lord. So let's rise up on our feet, please. I want us to pray concerning our tongue. Our mouth. Our mouth. Praise Jesus. Amen. I want us to pray concerning our tongue. Lord, set a watch on my tongue. Help me.